we have something called internal resistance when you have circuits. This is because they're real life circuits. Oh, maybe we'll uh, look at the little meme here. Uh, this is again from the office, but voltage divided by current. Resistance is futile. That's something, there's a lot of uh, things here. Resistance, resistance is futile, supposed to be from Star Trek. Have you ever seen uh, the next generation, the original versions? Uh, there was people called the Borg. Um, but then of course, Dwight Schrute from the office, he says wrong superconductors because the resistance is zero. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> Uh, we have internal resistance. That's because real life batteries aren't ideal. They're not perfect. They have their own internal resistance. And the way I like to think of it, it's almost like it eats away some of the volts. Um, of course, we shouldn't say voltage, we should say electric potential. That's why I put it in, print, uh, in uh, quotations. So here's the thing if we zoom in on a battery, normally we draw the battery, you know, with a little short little stick and then the tall stick. Um, if we zoom in on it, you can really draw it as this letter epsilon and with a little r. So this little r is going to be the internal resistance of the battery, and let's make sure we put in proper units here. Uh, that should be in ohms, that's a resistance. And this is the really weird part here. We have an epsilon, which is the electromotive force. And you might think, oh, a force, that's in newtons, right? Nope, the EMF is not a force. It's a little bit misleading. The EMF is actually a potential difference, which means it's measured in volts. That's the key thing right here, it's measured in volts. The way I like to think of it, the EMF is like, it's like what the battery's trying to put out. Can you imagine like, you know, you're actually trying to give this much potential? It's like uh, in this analogy, it's the amount of, you know, chocolate it's trying to give out. It's trying to give out, let's say, 10 pieces of chocolate. But the problem is uh, there's an internal resistance there. It eats up some of the chocolate, so to speak. So just imagine, it's like in everyday life, right? You, you want to, you know, give out chocolate to the people who are uh, passing by you. In other words, you want to give out uh, electric potential. The problem is there's sort of a middleman, um, you know, someone who's, uh, you know, like, hey, hey, sir, I'll I'll help you out. I will help you get your 10 pieces of chocolate to your customers. But of course, as they take the 10 pieces of chocolate, they sort of they just sort of eat a little bit. And then, hey, look at that. It's a nine volt battery. Like, no, it's supposed to be a 10 volt battery. Like, nope, it acts like a nine volt battery. That's because the uh, internal resistance sort of ate some of the chocolate. Remember, we're using chocolate and volts sort of interchangeably here. But uh, this is the key thing here. It's like a middleman that just takes their cut of the profits. So let's uh, maybe look at this equation right here. We have one for you. Uh, this is one that shows up directly in your data booklet. And it goes like this, that the EMF, that's this E, this epsilon, is equal to I. If you look, it almost looks like, doesn't it almost look like V equals IR? If you look at it, because remember, this right here is... That's measured in volts, isn't it? And this right here is a current, which is measured in amperes. And this right here is just a sum of two resistors, because there's two resistors in series. This because here you'd have a whole circuit. You know, you'd have this thing right here, plus your little resistor here. This is your inside the battery sort of zoom in. And then maybe you'd have a whole, like an actual resistor sitting in the circuit here. So this is a more realistic circuit, right? You have your EMF here, so really it's V equals IR. This is your voltage, so to speak. So, well, it's trying to be at least. So it's gonna be like a V equals IR. That's sort of how it works. I hope that's gonna make some sense. So what I'd like to show you then is this. If you wanna see how the battery or how the circuit actually acts, I like to actually sort of break open this equation. This is the one you get. So I'm gonna just rewrite it as epsilon equals, I'm just gonna multiply these out. So I, have I times capital R plus I times little r. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to isolate for IR by itself. So that means I have to move my minus uh, IR over to the other side. So you can see I have E minus IR equals capital I times capital R. Or can you see I've rewritten like this? So this is the same equation here. You see that's just this one, just written just the other way around. What I like is that this I times R, like the R of the whole circuit, that's sort of what you get. In other words, that's what the circuit actually acts as. Uh, whereas this is the EMF, that's like what the battery tries to give you. Remember, it might be trying to be a 10 volt battery, but there's some voltage lost by the internal resistance of the battery. You know, there's some electric potential that's lost here. So that's why I really like to see it this way. It makes more sense to me. It's like it's trying to put out this, but it's losing this amount of V here, volts here, which means then you end up with actually getting this. So I like this because they're all in terms of V. They're all values with uh, potential differences here in volts. And maybe let's do a real example. Um, 
I love this picture. Electronic circuit. How does that work? That's how I think a lot of people feel with these questions. Uh, so let's look at this. So we have a circuit, and it consists of 10 identical 5-ohm resistors. So already, can you imagine that now? I've got a whole bunch of that, and they're all connected in parallel. So I don't know, maybe I have my circuit like this, and I have a resistor here, and then another one here. I don't really feel like drawing 10 of them, do you? Dot, 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 dot. Right? I feel sad already at doing this. I don't feel like drawing the whole circuit diagram. I think you get the idea, right? There's 10 of them. So first of all, what's the equivalent resistance of the 10 resistors? Because I don't feel like drawing this. Let's just redraw it as one giant, well, not giant, but one resistor. I'll call it RP. You know, like I'll just redraw it as one resistor. So what do I do with parallel resistors? Do you remember the equation for parallel resistors? You can look it up. But the equation goes like this. It goes 1 over RP, you know, the parallel resistor is 1 over R plus 1 over R plus dot, dot, dot. You have to keep going. Well, how many do I have? I have 10 of them, don't I? So in this case, I have 1 over RP equals 1 over, let's see, the resistance is actually 5 ohms. I have 5 plus 1 over 5 plus 1 over 5. Can you see I've got 10 of them, and they all have the same denominator? So are you okay with this? Watch. I'm going to go 1 over RP. I'm going to set that equal to 10 times 1 over 5, because I got 1 over 5 plus 1 over 5 plus, I've got it 10 times, so I can just say 10 times 1 over 5, it's easier, which is equal to 10 over 5, which equals 2. So you could say then that RP equals uh, 2 ohms, right? No, remember again, this is 1 over RP equals 2. Therefore, RP equals 1 over 2, which is equal to 0 0.5 ohms. This is my equivalent resistance. So now this thing really acts as a 0 0.5 ohm resistor. I hope that made some sense here. This is hopefully how it works here uh, in your brain. Hopefully you're following. Now we have an internal resistance. So what we've really got now, I can redraw this battery now. I can redraw it as this thing, then a little internal resistor, R, and then my one battery, uh, my one resistor now that is 0 0.5 ohms, if that makes any sense. This is a lot simpler to look at than this mess. So you have internal resistance of the battery, which is 0 0.1 ohms, and I have the EMF is 6 volts, so this is what it's trying to be. That's epsilon here. Now, what is the circuit current? Any ideas how to do this? You may want to look at this equation right here we just looked at. Epsilon equals I times R plus R. If you're not sure, just start with an equation you know. Isn't that how you get marks on an exam? Uh, it turns out it is. So I'll solve this. So I'll say fine, then I have epsilon equals I times R plus R. Well, I just want I. So can you see that I can just get I by itself? It's just going to be epsilon divided by... Now remember, I right now is multiplying the R plus R. That means I can divide them together. So it's like one unit. So I'm going to divide both sides by that. So I end up with this. So the epsilon is uh, 6 volts, right? So I have 6 volts divided by uh, 0.1 plus 0.5. Maybe I'll write them down. So 0.5 plus 0 0.1 ohms. So that equals uh, 6 volts divided by 0 0.6 ohms. I don't need a calculator for this. 6 divided by 0 0.6. I hope you can see that uh, the answer then is going to be what? Uh, 6 divided by 0 0.6 is 10 and 10 amperes. So there we go, there's the circuit current. And finally, what's the potential difference across the terminal? How in the world do I do that? Um, across the terminal, that just means like, remember, this is the terminal right here. This is the whole, this is the battery here, across this. So what we're really asking for is what's the V here? Well, don't we know that V equals IR? Isn't that what it's supposed to be? Remember, I even showed this little sort of short form like this. This is like what you get. This is the potential difference you could say across the terminal. You could say it's that. That would be like across here, that distance right there. So the potential difference across this, let's see, what is it? It's just I times R. Do I know the whole circuit current? I do, the whole circuit current is 10 amperes. Do I know the whole circuit resistance? Uh, I do. What can I say here? The circuit resistance is 0.5. Can you see that? That's actually what the circuit is acting like. It's a 0.5 here. So I can say 0.5 ohms. Because remember, we're not caring about the internal resistance now. We're caring about the result here. 
So just i times r, which is just 10 times 0.5, so that just makes it 5. So I finally have 5.0 amperes. Oh, not amperes. Wrong units. Come on, Mitch. V is in volts. So you can see we've taken a question that might have looked really complicated, and we've simplified it, I hope, uh, you can see, immensely. So hopefully now you no longer feel like that little girl going, like, how does that work? Maybe you're like, maybe I know a little bit how it works.